Okay, so I was looking at this from afar, <laughs> the way I do most of my paintings, um, and just noticed uh, some small little things that would mean nothing to nobody except for me. Um, now this is a very re realistic heart with fatty tissue and veins and you know, it's got the main arteries, the vena cava and the aorta and, uh, you know, left pulmonary uh, artery or vein, well, whatever one of those. Um, now, <clears throat> uh, these are paintings of my life. So this is like a visual diary, <clears throat> something for my daughter also and um, I'm just looking for little teeny things now there is my signature name in here and uh, the reason for this is right here there's a date on there um, so th this is some of the benefits of being an artist when you develop tragedy in your life um, and you can channel that negative energy into something positive. And that's what my art has been for me. Um, I'm very lucky that I can do that. So I can channel all my emotions into my artwork and identify, you know, what... Um, I'm feeling or what's going on in my life with my art um, of course this represents me and my broken heart um, so I'm just lucky I can channel that that energy into something positive so that's kind of what I'm doing right now just uh, and it, this is also therapy for me. Um, now, when I'm painting, I'm thinking and remembering. I'm going to do some little high, not as drastic a highlight as what, what's happening there. I just kind of just touched it, and that, that's really not working for me. Um, it's just too too drastic. So what I'm going to do is eventually. Um, come in with some little white paint and just let it see I just barely touched it while it's wet and it's just oop, that's not working so well um, just let it bleed in so it looks more a better reflection what I think is a better reflection now this is something that's been sitting in my um, upstairs studio and I just kind of look at it and just think and see stuff that, and I'm going to do this to every little single thing in here that has that hot highlight that's way too hot. So I'm going to see if I can melt it down. Um, now sometimes there are highlights that are really severe and that is what's needed. And now... I can see that it wasn't needed on this little painting here. Um, now when I'm painting also, I'm thinking of the next painting. I know it's like I should be thinking about this, but sometimes when I'm working I'm just on autopilot. So I'm painting and I'm thinking about my next painting. Um, sometimes that takes longer than the actual painting is just not thinking of what to do on the painting. It's trying to figure out what is the next painting. Um, now, if you're gonna be doing stuff like uh, a landscape, which I've done a lot of landscapes. I have an idea and it doesn't take 
that much thought I'll use um, reference photos or you know just different things and you know recreate it I still don't know how I'm gonna get there it's just the concept of what I'm gonna be doing now for this uh, it has a lot of meaning um, of course it goes into my scientific nature of a realistic heart but it also gives the story of part of my life and the loss of my wife so uh, and being vulnerable um, I put the bob wire kind of as a protection through this but anyway enough of that um, right now I'm thinking and had a you know trying to come up with something that will be the next painting and um, I did one painting that there's an elephant swimming which is a realistic thing elephants do swim now the, the elephant I have in there is actually an African elephant and technically the only elephants I've seen swim are Indian elephants but I really like elf, uh, African elephants so it's not like it's a scientific thing that has to be exactly the right species for the scene I'm just doing whatever I want because that's just me so the elephant is underwater close to the surface send it down 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 and um, And I'm going to do one with whales. Now, I did one similar um, with whales, uh, and there's an escort of dolphins. Um, so I'm going to do something similar, but as I, it's going to be different, similar but different. So there's going to be a under and under the water and sky, um, but not with the whale I used as a. reference for that other painting I'm going to use actually one of my sculptures of a gray whale so I'm going to have that as my re reference now sometimes I will actually do a sculpture of something and use that as um, a tool for artwork painting um, not only because that's one way of doing stuff but it also means that sometimes you want to do an angle on something and it's really hard to visualize the angle. Um, you kind of um, you can, and, and you if you're a sculptor you kind of can see in 3D when you're painting um, so most people, some people can do that. Um, I can do that. Um, but it's a visual thing that's very hard for some people to like understand the underside of a whale, unless you can see the underside of a whale. Um, and if you sculpt it, you can obviously look from an angle coming from underneath and take a snapshot of it and then if you wanted to have it like turning and it, even if you wanted an angle like this like this like this like this you can turn your whale and take shots of it as it's moving and you'll know exactly what it looks like um, so sculpting and then using the sculpt sculpture as a tool um, is a really helpful thing Okay, I'm kind of liking this. Now these take several layers, but you're gonna see, you know, some of them I'll probably let go because I may soften some of these hot highlights. Um, now I'm gonna probably take a short little video of the whale I sculpted 
and it's not going to be a fin whale like I did my other painting. It's going to be a gray whale with a calf. Um, anyway, so let me just get a close-up on this now. So, And I'm going to move it around. Now, you're, you're looking at it very close. So... Um, This is not which the way you would normally be looking at my painting. It would be at least you'd be probably looking at it from oh I don't know um, oh anywhere from a foot, two feet, three feet away. Um, now you're looking at it from like three inches. So um, you can see I do get really detail in some of the. So it's my scientific background that takes over also um, and gives me a surrealistic look at my work. Um, anyway, so just going to stop there and then I'll put the video of my gray whale. Okay, so I'm going to show you the gray whale. Oh, and uh, <laughs> I just purchased some new shoes. Uh, Picasso's Gurney Guernica. Now, if you really study this painting, it's a really cool painting because he uses other uh, people's work to interpret. So he uses Goya's, um, I guess, the execution, uh, the revolution where the guy's holding his hands up, and he does his own kind of interpretation. So he's taking from a lot of artists and then reinterpret it for this painting. But <laughs> I kind of go off on a tangent. So this is one of my whales I've sculpted. So uh, I'm gonna use this as a reference for my... <laughs> uh, way, my next painting of a gray whale with calf with an escort of dolphins um, swimming alongside and jumping out of the water. So anyway, that's the little helpful thing right here. Hello, um, I'm Steve Melendres, a model maker, illustrator, scientific illustrator, sculptor, design after history museum in Los Angeles. Done a lot of different things, um, but I'm going to be doing watercolor demonstrations of the techniques I've developed over the years. Um, and it's going to go from a lot of different directions. And also I'm going to be doing videos. Uh, I call them video posters for my daughter. So a lot of stuff that I can leave to my daughter about her crazy dad. <laughs> so um, I'm taking a lot of different directions, but mainly three. Um, so anyway, that's my introduction that I'm going to attach to every thing I'm doing now so I don't have to repeat this. Be careful out there.